On today's episode of The Joy of Editing, we'll be looking at the new gradient tool in Photoshop 2023. It's quite an improvement over the old gradient tool. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I want to show you the new gradient tool in Photoshop 2023. This is a really great addition to Photoshop. I have two different examples. On this image, I'm going to close off the top and the bottom of the image with a new tool. I'll show you how that works. And on the second image, I'm going to add a nice little yellow glow in the corner over here with the gradient tool. So I have these two examples for you. Let's start out with this example first. All I'm going to do is get a curves adjustment layer. So we'll just come down here to the adjustment layer icon and we're going to grab a curves adjustment and what I want to do is change the blend mode from normal to multiply and that'll darken the entire image. Now I have a white mask on here. I want to invert that. That's command or control I to hide that adjustment. So I'll do a command I am using a Mac control I for a PC and now we don't see the adjustment. And now we could try out that new gradient tool. Now you could either type G on your keyboard. That's a shortcut for the gradient tool or we could click right here and that'll give us our gradient tool. And then we have different options up here. You'll notice now we have two different types of gradients. We have the new gradient tool. This is a drop down. If you click right here, you can use the old classic gradient. It's not as powerful. I don't recommend using it anymore, but I would use this new gradient. So that's what we're going to use right now. But we have, we can use a linear gradient. We can use a radial gradient angle gradient, reflected gradient, or a diamond gradient. And for most of us photographers, we're going to be using linear gradients and radial gradients. So we're going to start out with a linear gradient. So I click on linear gradient. Now we'll be applying the gradient to the layer mask itself. Okay. And you'll notice I have a white paint swatch on top and a black on the bottom. If you want to flip those around, just type your X key. You could flip them around. But I want my white on top and the black on the bottom. That's important because when I start to draw my gradient down, I want the white to reveal the darkening from the multiply blend mode. If you ever want to shift these two colors around, just type your X key and you'll flip flop them. You see that? But I want the white on top. And then if we come up here next to gradient, this is another drop down. If you click here, here's all the different presets you have for your gradients. And I'm in basics. And the first one here is for foreground to background, which is really what I want. And that's dealing with these swatches here. And again, my white is on top for the foreground. And this next one is foreground to transparent. And the last one is black to white. But I want this first one right here. So I'm going to click on that. And remember, I've also clicked right here to give me that linear gradient. And now all we need to do is left click with our mouse and drag. Now you can click outside of the canvas, inside the canvas. Now if I click inside the canvas, like right here, if I click and drag down, okay? Now if you hold your shift key, you'll constrain that to stay straight down for you. Or if you drag it to the left, it'll it'll constrain to the different angles. You see that as I drag, or if I leave go of the shift key, it'll just go any way I want it. But I'm gonna hold my shift key when I get near the center and that'll constrain it to go straight down. Now, from this point up, it's going to be its darkest, okay? And you'll notice when I hover over this line, you see the arrow that pops up there with that cross hatch. If I click here, I can actually drag this up off the canvas, you see that? See that flexibility I have there? So I can make that, you know, less dark up at the top by dragging this up and out of there. But I'm going to go ahead and drag this down to right to the edge right there. Now you see this diamond here? This will graduate that gradient. So watch this. See when I pull it up here, can you see it going up? And as I draw it down, it feathers on down. You see that? So you can adjust this here, which is really nice. Now remember, when you hover over this line and you see the arrow with the crosshatch, then you can just drag this and move it anywhere you want it to go. So everything above this circle right here, this white circle, is going to be its darkest point. So if I hover here and get that arrow and drag down, the area above that white circle will be the darkest point. And again, I can drag it up off out of here, maybe, maybe right to about right here, and then I can adjust this to feather it 
and get it to look just the way I would like it to look. Now that I've closed off the top of the image, let's see a before and after. Now, right now, you'll notice we have this line right here for the gradient. Well, I don't want to see that. So if you don't want to see that, here's a tip. Click on the icon for the curves adjustment layer or whatever adjustment layer you're using. Click on it and then you will, that line will go away. So now we can see there's the before and there's the after. And then if I felt it was too strong, I could take my opacity and pull this back if I needed to, but I think it looks good. But if I need to readjust it, just click on the layer mask and you'll see this again. And now we can come here and adjust it any way we would like. Now let's close off the bottom of the image and then we'll move on to the next example. Now I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna click on the adjustment layer icon and grab a curves adjustment layer, change the blend mode to the multiply blend mode, and then I'll invert this mask, command or control I to invert it. Now just for the heck of it, let's grab the old gradient so you can see how much different it is and it's not, you don't get as accurate of adjustments with it, okay? So let me show you. Let me click here and click on classic gradient. Now when I click here and drag up, and the same holds true if I hold my shift key down, I'll constrain that to go straight up. Now you don't see anything happening. It's not a live gradient. I believe they call that a live gradient, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm gonna drag this up. Now after I release it, you can see it here, but that's it right there. Now there's no way to change it. There's no feathering diamond that I could change it with, right? I just have to redraw it again, okay? And keep playing with it till, you know, I get it the way I want it to look. And then I could come here and adjust the opacity, right? I'm gonna go ahead and delete this mask and just click on delete mask. I just clicked on my trash can after I clicked on the mask and now my mask is gone. But if you hold your alt or option key down as you click on this mask icon, you'll give yourself a black mask hiding that adjustment. And now let's try the new gradient tool. So right now we're on classic gradient. So click the drop down and click on gradient and we'll try out the new tool. And now I still have my white swatch on top for foreground and black for the background. Remember, you can type X to flip those around, but I'm gonna type X again and get my white on top. And now I'm on linear gradient. So now I can just click right here, click. I'm gonna hold my shift key down to keep that straight and see I can just draw up that gradient. But you notice when I, when I do that, you can actually see that live what is going on there. You see that as I drag that up. So I could drag this into position, maybe right about here. And now when I hover over here, you see that uh, arrow with a crosshatch, right? So I could drag this up and make it darker this way. Because remember, everything below the white here will be as dark as it can go. So I can drag this out of the canvas like this. The old gradient tool didn't give us all these fine tuning adjustments and I love this new tool. And remember we have the diamond here that we can adjust and then we can click here and drag this up. Now I'm gonna hold my shift as I click this, but see how I can drag that up. And again, if I hover over and get the arrow with the crosshatch, I can just pull that right into position. And remember to see a before and after, if you don't wanna see the gradient here, just click on the curves icon or whatever adjustment layer icon you have, just click on it. And now we can click on the eyeball. Here's the before and here's the after. And remember we have this opacity, but I think you'll find this to be a much nicer way of making gradients. And let me know in the comment section below what you think of this new gradient tool inside of Photoshop 2023 with this latest update. On the final example, I want to use a radio gradient to add a nice orangish yellow glow over here. I think that would look really nice in this image. And to do that, we'll use a radio gradient. So I'm going to use the new gradient tool. So I have it on gradient. I don't have it on classic gradient. I'm going to use the second option, which is the radio gradient right here. And what I'm going to do is just click and drag a nice big circle like this. And we could come in here and move this around any place we want, but I wanna put it up in this corner, like right up into here. Now remember, right here in the center, it'll be its most potent right there, okay? So I'm gonna drag this right into about here and I think that'll look good, but I know that looks horrible. You're saying, why is that black with a white gradient? And that doesn't look good, right? So what we'll do is I'm gonna hover over this circle right here and double click. And when we do, a color picker comes up and so I'm gonna choose a color, like an orangey yellow color, like right around in here. 
and then we can adjust this slider up or down to maybe right around here and i want it to be pretty bright so i'm going to click right here but i don't think i want it that saturated so i'm going to drag this over to right around here and click ok and it still doesn't look good okay <laughs> so here's what we're going to do all we need to do is change this blend mode. Right now it's on normal. Click on the drop down and click on screen. And now it looks good right now. We have that nice glow on there. So that's pretty cool. Now, again, we can adjust this. Okay, so I'm what I think I'll do is extend it out. But now you'll notice it's going over. I believe this is a links over the face and over the ears. And that's not good, but we can fix that. Now, if we double click right here, we can go ahead and I want to make that more orange. So I'm going to come down around in here. Yeah, maybe a little darker, something like that and click OK. So we can always come back here and change this. And don't forget about this diamond. See how we can adjust that and adjust it and feather it just the way we like it. So let's see, where do I like it? I think I like it right around here, but you'll notice it's going over the face and ear. Now we can make it smaller. If I hover over the black here and just drag this like this, we can make it smaller or larger, or you could come out here and see the arrow right there and make it smaller or larger right in here if you want to. And then if you come here, you can come in here and move it around. You can even uh, add another stop here, change the, change the color, add another color in here. See when I hover close to the line, you see that little plus with the arrow. I could double click here and now that's white, but I could change that to red or whatever I want and click OK. I don't want that. To get rid of that, just click and drag it off just like that. I just wanted to point that out. Generally, I'll just use like one color here, but now I want to get it off the links. So here's what I'm going to do. There's different ways you can do this, but what I'll do is I'm going to click on this layer mask and click the trash can right here. And it asks me the question, do you want to delete the layer mask? I'll just say, yeah, delete it. So now the layer mask is gone. Now I'm going to click on the background layer and notice when I click on the background layer, notice that my contextual taskbar opens up and it has a select subject option. So I can click on select subject or I could have went over to select and clicked on subject right here. I could have done it that way, but this is so quick and easy. Select subject, give it a second or two. AI will select out my subject. Now I'm going to click on my gradient fill there. But what I'll do is click on the mask icon and check this out. The background is masked out. Now I want the opposite. So I can do a command or control I and invert that. And after inverting it, you can see now the background shows through and it's off the ear and the face. Another option would have been to option or alt click on the mask icon. That would have saved a little bit of time. I could have saved the invert step. But anyway, check it out. Here is the before and here is after. But isn't that cool? Now, if we want to readjust this, just click on the gradient icon. And now you can see there is our gradient. And so we can come here and adjust it and do whatever we want with it. And again, we could click here and change up the color if we want. What if we want it to be a little more on the orange side? Something like that. Make it a little bit lighter. Click OK. So we can come and do it. Remember, if you don't want to see this gradient here, just click. In this case, right now we're on here click on the mask and then you won't see it. When you click on the actual gradient adjustment, now you'll see it. Okay, but if I click on the mask, you won't. And again, there's the before and there's the after. And if it's too strong, just take the opacity and pull it back a little bit. But just like that, there you go. But that's the new gradient tool and it is really awesome. I think you need to give it a try if you haven't already. And if you have, let me know in the comment section again what you think about it. Well, there you go, everyone. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.